You're watching KDLT, the station that's working for you. And now, this is News 5 at 5. Up next on News 5 at 5, friends and family say goodbye to 10-year-old Trevor Hawley, the little boy killed Tuesday night in a hit-and-run accident. We'll take you to the Sioux Falls Humane Society for their second annual Adopt-a-thon. And in tonight's Dakota Gardens, Chad and Haley show us some new flower varieties to get us ready for this season's gardening. This is News 5. Good evening, everyone. I'm Melissa McBride. Thanks for joining us tonight. Ten-year-old Trevor Holly was laid to rest today. Friends, family, and people in the community affected by his tragic death attended the funeral service this morning in Sioux Falls. The Holly family gave News 5 permission to videotape those who came to say goodbye to Trevor, who was killed Tuesday night by a hit-and-run driver on West 10th Street. Our hearts go out to the Holly family tonight. Trevor's parents told News 5 yesterday they are very thankful for the support they're receiving from the community. Donations for Trevor are still being accepted at Kello Radio. So far, more than $7,200 has been collected. If you'd still like to help the family, you can drop off donations at Kello Radio Monday morning. A South Dakota man was killed early this morning in a car crash in western Minnesota. Authorities say 68-year-old James Turrell of Astoria died in a two-vehicle accident on Highway 67 just south of Dawson, Minnesota. His wife Stella is in serious condition at McKinnon Hospital in Sioux Falls this evening. Hot oil in a frying pan caused a Sioux Falls kitchen to start on fire. Firefighters were called to 401 South Sycamore around noon. Two children were getting ready to fry potatoes when the oil caught on fire. The kids threw water on it and the fire spread to the cupboards. The damage is estimated at several thousand dollars. No one was injured. A University of South Dakota student arrested in a fake ID bust stands indicted by a Clay County jury. 19-year-old Dallas Petrie is now charged with 11 counts of forgery and 11 counts of conspiracy to commit forgery, which are felonies. Campus police received a tip that Petrie was allegedly using his computer to make fake South Dakota driver's licenses. Police searched Petrie's dorm room on April 21st and found several licenses in the process of being made. 28 other students face charges for purchasing the fake IDs. Petrie is from Sioux Falls. A North Dakota man who confessed on the internet to killing his daughter will plead not guilty. Sources tell News 5 Larry Freustad may be staying with his mother and father in Rapid City. A hearing was held yesterday in Dickinson, North Dakota to set bail, but sources say the judge may be allowing Freustad to stay with the family because he's taking antipsychotic medication. In March, people who were logged on to an internet chat room say Freustad confessed to getting drunk and setting his house on fire, killing his five-year-old daughter three years ago. Vietnam veterans are holding their regional conference in Sioux Falls this weekend. Vietnam Veterans of America gathered at the Ramada Inn for a special reason. And we feel that South Dakota, being the only state without a state organization, needs to come online with us so they can be truly part of a region. National President George Duggins is helping Vietnam vets deal with important issues. He says war veterans need to be recognized for their tour of duty. You notice with the Gulf War veterans, we have adopted them as our younger brothers, and we have helped them to lobby and to acquire the rights that they so richly deserve. So that's basically what we mean by one generation of veterans will know to get another. The conference runs through tomorrow. Three more families can call Sioux Falls home thanks to Habitat for Humanity and many volunteers. This house at 3224 North Jessica was dedicated to the Bayin Bayrou family today. 13-year-old Tiras Bayin read a thank you letter after her family received the keys to their new house. First Premier Bank employees helped make the American dream a reality. Together and um, would, would come together on Wednesday or, or Saturdays and spend their time. I think that was a part of the purpose for this is to create camaraderie within our organization. Meanwhile, this house across the street is being dedicated to the Stefaniuk family today. Citibank workers helped make it possible for the family to have a home of their own. This is the 29th home built by Habitat for Humanity in Sioux Falls. The 30th Habitat home will be dedicated to the Morrison family tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and that house is located at 216 South Wall. Well, it may be sprinkling outside, but it's raining cats and dogs at the Sioux Falls Humane Society. Tonight, News 5's Anna Peters takes us to the Adopt-a-thon, where dozens of pets are finding new homes. Amy Woolen.
Allen and her kids drove from Burt, Iowa to spend the morning at the Sioux Falls Humane Society. They're looking for a puppy to play with the kitten they adopted a few months ago. It's hard to pick. It really is. There's so many, so many cute dogs and cats and, oh, my daughter is begging for another kitty. But I think we'll go with the puppy this time and maybe check into a cat later. The Wollens and several other families are looking for that perfect pet to care for. All ages people come through, from little kids coming in for a hamster to older couples coming in for older dogs. Today's Adopt-a-thon kicks off National Be Kind to Animals Week. The Humane Society is extending its hours and extra volunteers are on hand to make it easier to adopt a pet. We've seen a lot of people come through and um, there's been a lot of animals that come out and a lot of kitties going out today. So it seems to be the popular thing, but we've had a few older dogs go out with us too. So. so it doesn't matter if you're a cat person or a dog person, as long as you can give a pet a good home. In Sioux Falls, Anna Peters, News 5. The Humane Society is open until 9 o'clock tonight and from 11 to 6 o'clock tomorrow. They're also having a bake sale and raffle to raise money to care for the animals. Stay with us. Chad Sewich is up next with your weather forecast. KDLT and MSNBC, your online information team has reached for the skies. With the power of IntelliCast, our website is ready to bring you the latest weather updates with the click of a mouse. Doppler, Nexrad, and satellite imaging. Hear local forecasts from Mike Harvey and Chad Seawitch by clicking weather on our site. 21st Century Weather at www.kdlt.com. KDLT at MSNBC, the future of news. You're watching KDLT's News 5, the station that's working for you. Welcome back to the News 5 Weather Center. Kind of a rainy start to our weekend, but sunshine is on tap for tomorrow, and we actually have some sunshine working in tonight. Let's take a look at our regional radar. We can see some rain showers. It shows up very nicely, this low pressure system has a swirl of rain showers, and I'll show you those clouds in a little bit. You can see it's a very tightly wounded low pressure system that is moving to the southeast. It's slowly moving out of here, and we should see a few breaks of a cloud cover later on tonight. Take a look at Doppler 5, a little closer look, you can see a few scattered showers towards the Yankton area, maybe a little north of Sioux Falls, but again, some very light rain showers falling out there, nothing heavy at all, 63 in Huron right now, 63 in Chamberlain, 59 in Yankton, it's 64 in Rock Rapids, Iowa, and 57 degrees in, in Sioux Falls under light sprinkles skies right now, humidity is at 69%, winds are out of the north at 9 miles per hour, and your barometric pressure is on the rise tonight. Today, I rather, we did see a high of 57 degrees below a normal of 66, a low of 38 degrees below a normal of 41, 701 hundredths of an inch of precipitation, and we are a little above for the year. Sunrise tomorrow at 617. Let's take a look at the regional map. High pressure, it's actually a little north of that right now, but this is in a couple hours. It is going to start to break up those clouds and also move that rain shower activity to our south and to our east as well. That low pressure system 